Hey Creative Souls, my name is Chloe. I'm the owner of Ray of Gratitude here to talk about on this YouTube channel about cards, about chakras, and about creativity. I'm all about creativity and that soul expression. And today I really want to talk about why printing slash publishing companies can be a real pain in the <laughs> They just really can. Even though I love print, like a lot of people don't know or have no idea what goes into making things that are print, you know, that are printed, you know, like magazines, um, newspapers, um, books, which is becoming really big and relevant now. Um, labels, you know, for products, if you have a business for products. Um, what else? The list goes on and on. T-shirts, you know, there's a lot of different things that go into printing things. Even if you want to reprint your paintings, it's just certain things that you really need to be aware of. And I wanted to, what inspired me to do this video, honestly, has been my journey of creating my soul care, creative soul care workbook, um, that I recently launched. Um, which I'm so excited because people are buying. I started my pre-sale, just ended, and I'm just ready. You can always look in the link below if you're interested in what that's about. But yeah, it's like, it reminded me, I'm like, here we go again. You know, it just makes me bite my nails, like literally. It just gets me so nervous and whatever. So I just want to give you guys a few tidbits on what pretty much, like, what you need to look for like into um um what you need to understand and what I can't really tell you the process exactly but what actually goes into the working of printing a garment or a product all right y'all so let's get into it <laughs> so I'm gonna be looking at a little bit of my notes so don't mind me looking down you know I'm just being honest like you know whatever so, um, the process here when you do printing is really about the design concept, actually making that concept into reality through a graphic designer or, you know, if you're a designer, that's even plus, but somebody has to design something to make the print, right? And then when the designer makes a print, they have to really consider and take into consideration with a lot of these things. If they don't, I think you need to look at a new graphic designer. Just saying. Because um, sometimes graphic designers, they're good for making things look pretty, but then it's like, what happened to how you saved the file? What happened to you setting it up a certain way? Especially if a client knows diddly squat about going to the printing company. Um, I'm only speaking from my experience because I'm a graphic designer that's done freelance work for over 10 years. <laughs> and many people were like, oh, you, I never got this and so-and-so didn't do that. And I'm like, are you serious? Like, that's important. So one thing for sure, right? is you have to proof read many times all right that's one thing that you have to you have to do and i still like i don't do as much graphic design as i used to but when i was heavy doing that i remember i was coming across a lot of things i used to work with startup companies and you know when people wanted to sell products they were giving me certain things that were like did you proofread this um even when it came to like websites, like the about page, it just didn't sound good. And I'm like, I am not a writer, but I will proofread this for you. And it made me question, like, should I charge this? You know, some people will be like, yeah, how's yeah? And some people are like, no, you know what I mean? But at least we had two different eyes. Um, For me, my golden rule is three other people. Oh, that finger was delayed, y'all. Don't, don't come for me. <laughs> Three other people's eyeballs to look at your work because let's face it, when you're just even when you're designing, your eyes just get like blah. It's almost like um when you're driving and all you see, especially at night, what do they call that? They have a certain term for it, but when you see at night those lines are just repetitive, it makes you tired. Like and your eyes get tired and you're just like, um, what am I reading? Like everything looks the same. Um, those little black words 
on a piece of paper start to just look like mash gumbo. And um, I would say in the corporate world that they have a golden rule, but my first corporate job was working at a newspaper company. And let me tell you, it was just me, the designer, and the proofreader slash writer. Um, and half the time, they didn't even look at that stuff. So, like, we would just be going back and forth looking at it. I think on the other end, though, I don't want to come for them all the way because that job was just straight up trash. But anyway, <laughs> um, on the other end, you know, the whole other side of the building, I do think they also had, like, a few other proofreaders to look at the stuff before we approved it because I'm sure you've looked in a newspaper or a magazine and found like oh they spelled that wrong you know typos and stuff and you know sometimes it's just inevitable but many times um you really really have to do that because one people are getting paid to do that and two it just looks more professional and as you know if you're an entrepreneur or business person you want it to look as professional as possible you know um so proofread that stuff which can be a pain in the ass because it's like i have to keep proofreading and if you don't have somebody then you have to kind of hire somebody or possibly get some family members to look through it you know i don't know but that's something that you really need to do it's not like a like let's go we can do this instantly that's not what comes to printing again products we're talking about products um based companies right if you have a product that you're selling what option are you giving your client to help them feel good about this product that they're receiving from you like what what makes them feel good there's something that you need to think about with that um also like for instance if you have a book like does it make sense to have a certain type of binding you know do you want it perfect bound do you want it saddle stitch? Do you want it spiral? You know, some of those things. And I and that was something that I was harping on recently for me because I do not like how spiral bound books look, especially for certain things that I do. It just doesn't look good. But it the functionality of it, and I think I'm saying that word right, made sense to do that. But this is another thing that you have to consider too is knowing your company that you're going to to print like do they offer certain things that you need because if they don't don't just go to them because it's cheaper really start like asking a lot of questions writing down the needs for the product that you're creating and understanding certain things because again are you considering your client right how can the company make it look like you took it off of the shelf right instead of now, don't knock, I don't want to knock staples because I've used staples so many times, but I know how to maneuver certain things to make it look good from staples. Now, if you're not, if you don't have that design niche, design knack or anything like that, more than likely, my bad, y'all, more than likely, um, it's going to look like, you know, you spent 10 cents per sheet um, off of a regular machine you know just saying um of course you can use home printers and make things look like but you usually when you can do that it's because you have this dis design aesthetic that most people don't so i'm just saying you know pat yourself on the back or something if you do do that shout out to you okay <laughs> But also, you need to consider, too, like, certain functionalities, like I was talking about, what applies to what you're creating. Like, um, do they, if you're creating a t-shirt, do they print on the tag? Can you make it look like your own brand? Or does it look like, you know, Gildan's t-shirt right now? And nothing is wrong with that. I'm going to state that again. Nothing is wrong like with that. Be real with where you are at right now in the process of having a startup company you know because you can always cut off the gildan's tag too just saying but just understand like what goes into the budget that you have and what does that company do for you that can make it look like you know professional so moving forward towards the techie terms right you need to understand how to speak print 
You know, speak that language. Do you understand what DPI means? Do you understand what bleed means? Printing um, full bleed. Do you understand how to mark and mock up? Because again, certain graphic designers, I'm just telling y'all, don't come for me, but at the same time, if y'all not doing this for y'all clients, y'all really need to kind of step y'all game up and stop just giving people just design and that's that. Where's the customer care? You know, because sometimes customers will come back knocking on your door saying, hey, I didn't understand what they were asking for. I don't know what a PDF or a JPEG is. And um, I'm trying to print something by next week. And then you're looking like, now, some graphic designers might be like, all right, well, give me some money and I'll help you. I mean, use your integrity, basically, you know, to each his own. But for me, for Koi, the way I like to wrap everything up with my design so that way it's like, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. And not in a quick way, but in a way it's like, kind of get out of my hair because I, I want you to learn things on your own and not be codependent on me. Because I, I don't know, for the love of me, I remember, especially when I was doing freelancing, it almost seemed like clients got so used to my customer service, it was like they thought I was at home twiddling my hair and waiting for them to call me. And it's like, I have a life too, y'all. Like, so get get familiar, at least, with the tech terms. Um, Understand ways, like when you're talking about printing, you know, understand ways um, with binding, you know, if it's a book, understand what a silk screen um, printing service is versus a DTG, right? Direct to garment um, printing service. Try to ask what type of um, machines that they use, you know, um, ask a lot of questions do your research before you actually go with a printing service. When it comes down to printing things on a mug, um, even too, guys, what is, I wish they had 10 years ago. I don't remember being aware of this, but like, um, what is it called? Drop shipping, I think. Like, that is so convenient. Do you have the space and the money to keep all of your things at home versus a company that does... Is it drop shipping? Oh man, y'all, I'm forgetting. I don't know if it's drop shipping or it's um something, but like other companies that allow you to like create your own little store online, right? And then they do the shipping for you. Consider that because that's a big help, especially as if you're a startup company. It's a great help to do that. Um, but understand like what are you doing if you're printing postcards, books. What type of papers do they use? What are the weights of the papers that they use? Do they um, have protection, lamination? Um, there's so many different things. Do they have um, certain colors that they print in? Do they have accents like foil? Um, it's also another terminology that I'm getting lost for. Um, I can't remember y'all off the back of my head. But knowing the files, knowing how to set up the files are definitely, definitely, definitely most important. Um, because sometimes when you upload things, they want a PDF, not the original file, like Illustration or Photoshop. Um, sometimes they just want a JPEG, which is more of a flattened one. Does it have a transparent background, which would more than likely be a PNG? These are things that you really need to consider um, before choosing a company and also when setting up, um, when you chose the company on how to get this delivered. And that kind of brings me to my last thing that I want to say is details matter. They matter, they matter, they matter. Okay. Like how close are you printing to the edge? Do you want a border on it? You know, I, I think I already said a lot of these things. Oh, also, are the words legible? Are you using six points um, size um, in Courier, you know, opposed to New Times Roman, which will look different different ways as well. And that's something that you need to discuss, discuss, excuse me, with the designer when you're going over the fonts. And where are where is the designer getting the fonts from? Because some fonts 
aren't legal for you to reproduce in a way that you're actually selling a product. Just saying. And nobody will tell you that unless you speak or ask questions to the designer. So you heard it from me. Printing products, publishing products takes a lot. This is why this is over 15 minutes. <laughs> it takes a lot. But all these things that you want to take into consideration, especially when you're coming up with a product and you're ready to make the prototype or make the real deal, you have to take in consideration because sometimes you do not have to go the extra mile when you are creating just a prototype. You just need the design to look good and something that is manageable that can be cost efficient just for one thing. Because when you're going to a printing company, nine times out of ten, the type of machines they use, it will cost so much for them to print just one thing. So that's where staples ta -ha, comes into real play. You know, um, I love staples, y'all. I have made so many things from staples that... Nobody probably would have been like, oh, did you go to? Like, no, I went to Staples. But you have to know how to set things up. And that's the most important thing when it comes to printing and publishing things. So I hope this resonates with you. I hope that you were taking notes or this really allows you to consider certain things when or before starting a product line or creating a certain product to get printed. Um... You know, I've printed cards. It's still the same thing that you need to consider in order to um, get these things printed. You know, how many are you starting with? Um, certain technical difficulties or file setups. And, you know, how much does it cost? What can that company do for you and your needs as well? It's very big. So if you're feeling the vibe, please subscribe. There's plenty more where this comes from. I'm going to be speaking more about some of the techie things on um, creating, you know, when it comes to um, specifically creating your own art, um, startup companies, right? Um, I, I feel like when it comes to creativity and I'm speaking to my creative souls, I just want to speak more on things that I've learned as a designer as well because... I think we all can relate to certain things, you know, especially the ones that have been creating. For those that haven't, um, you know, I'm all about all aspects here. This is why I chose graphic design because there's so many things. It's an umbrella of things and there's so many different other things that fit under the umbrella. And I just love to give that to you. So again, if you like creativity, cards and chakras talking about that energy baby then here we are come through um you already know hit subscribe like and also share with other people too and shout out to those people that have ink um left handers okay <laughs> shout out to y'all please comment below if you are one but until next time i'm out y'all peace